I've been a maths teacher for over 13 years now and in that time I have seen lots of mistakes. I've even made one or two mistakes myself. But there are some common mistakes that come up time and time again that are costing people marks in their GCSE exams. So that is the focus of today's video. I'm looking at three common mistakes that people make in their GCSE exams. But more importantly, these are three mistakes that are really, really easy to correct. So keep watching to see if these are mistakes that you are making and if so, how you can easily correct them. The first common mistake that I come across is to do with estimating. Now, in your GCSE exam, you are almost certainly going to be asked to estimate the answer. And it's almost certainly going to be in the first paper. That's the non-calculator paper. Typically, you'll see something like this, where it asks you to calculate 0.526 multiplied by 39.6 squared all over the square root of 97.65. So have a think, what would you do in this situation? This is a non-calculated paper and you're asked to estimate an answer for that. What would you get? So if this comes up in a calculator paper, which they do sometimes, the temptation is just to put all those numbers into your calculator and then round the number off at the end, which is actually not what they want you to do. Or if it comes up in a non-calculator paper, people often panic because they don't know what to do with those numbers. They look really, really awkward. Well, what the examiners want you to do in this situation is just to round each number off in the question to one significant figure. In other words, just round off that first digit, well, the first digit that isn't a zero, and just round that off and then replace the rest with zeros. So that first number, 0 0.526, we're going to round that off to 0 0.5. Okay, we look at that first number that isn't a zero, which is five and we decided we're going to round it off to 5, or do we have to round it up to 6? Well, it just stays as 5 because it's followed by 2. The second number, 39.6, we're just going to round that off to 40. I just looked at the first digit, the 3, and decided how to round that off. Well, it's followed by a 9, so I'm going to round it up to a 4. But it's not just 4, it's 40. I've got to include that 0 to maintain the same sort of value. The last number, 97.65, just looking at that first digit, the nine, and it's followed by seven, so I'm gonna round it up. In other words, that 97.65 is approximately 100, isn't it? If I round that 97 up, I round it up to 100. So once we've rounded those off, it suddenly looks a lot easier. We've got 0 0.5 multiplied by 40 squared divided by the square root of 100. Well, the square root of 100 is 10, isn't it? So actually what we've got is 0 0.5 times 40 squared divided by 10. 40 squared just means 40 times 40. Well, 4 times 4 is 16. So 40 times 40 is going to be 1,600. So what we finally get is 0 0.5 times 1,600 divided by 10. Or well, 0 0.5 times 1,600, that's the same as a half times 1,600. And that's really just the same as saying half of 1,600 which is 800, isn't it? So we've got 800 divided by 10. Well, 800 divided by 10 is just 80. So once you've rounded off each of the numbers in the question to one significant figure, suddenly it becomes a lot easier, doesn't it? Certainly a lot easier than it first appears. So just remember, when you're asked to estimate this type of question, you do the rounding off at the start. You round off all the numbers that are in a question. The second common mistake that I see is this kind of thing where we've got find the value of 2n squared where n is equal to 6. So you have to substitute 6 back into that and, and work out what you've got. I want you to have a go at this. So just take a second, uh, pause the video if you need to, work it out. And what do you get for this? If you've got 144, you've fallen into the trap. You've made this mistake. And the reason is that you have done things in the wrong order. What you need to do with these is you need to do the squaring first. So you would do six squared, which is 36, and then multiply it by two, which gives you an answer of 72. It's a really easy one to fix this. You just do the powers bit first, you know, that little index number, you calculate that first, then you do the multiplying. And that's all to do with bid mass, isn't it? The I stands for indices, which refers to the index numbers, you know, powers of numbers. So you do that first before you do the multiplication. So the third thing I want to look at involves brackets, in particular when you're subtracting brackets. So let's say we've got something like this, 4x minus 1 
take away x add 4. So again, I want you to take a moment, pause the video if you need to, and just work this out yourself and see what you would get for this. My guess is that you either end up with 3x add 3 or 3x minus 5. One of those two, but only one of those is correct. And in fact, the correct one is 3x minus 5. Let me explain why. We have to take away both of the things in that second bracket. We have to take away x and we have to take away 4. You might find it useful to expand that bracket first. And to do that, I would think of it as having a 1 outside it. Actually, it's negative 1, isn't it? Okay, so we're going to do negative 1 times x, which is negative x. And we're going to do negative 1 times 4, which is negative 4. So we end up with 4x minus 1 minus x minus 4. And if we put the x's together, the 4x take away the x, we've got 3x. And if we take away the 4 from that negative 1, we get negative 5. So you should end up with 3x minus 5. So it's an easy one to correct, but it's also an easy one to make a mistake on. So I would definitely just keep practicing those, particularly the ones that involve negatives like we just looked at there. So that's it. Three common mistakes that people make in a GCSE exam and how to correct them. I hope you found it useful. If you did, I would be hugely appreciative if you give the video a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. If you've done either of those things, thank you very much indeed. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.